Hello and welcome to this class. We are on chapter 5 talking about fundamentals of traffic flow and queuing theory. And in the past couple of classes, our focus has been on queuing theory. We talked about a lot of concepts. And we also talked about DD1 when we have deterministic arrival and departure with a one server channel. Today, I will continue the discussion with providing you with another example. And we also talk about a couple other forms of queuing systems. So this is the example that <clears throat> we didn't touch in the last class. So we have, um, uh, we, are, we are observing arrivals and departures at a highway toll booth over a 90 minute time period. The observer notes that the arrival and departure rates are deterministic, but they are not uniform. They change over time according to a known function. So the arrival rate or lambda, which is now a function of t. In the previous example, our lambda was a fixed number. It was like 6 or 8. So every minute, 6 or 8 vehicles were arriving. But here, it is a function of t. And what that means is that the number of vehicles that arrive over time changes it is not fixed but we absolutely and completely know as a function of time what is the rate and the same is true for departure rate so our departure rate is known but it's not fixed so it's a known function um, that changes by changing the value of t but it's not fixed. So we have our lambda t and mu t um, as functions of t. And the question asks us to determine the total vehicle delay. Uh, sorry, I needed to change this. The total vehicle delay and the longest queue, assuming that we have a DD1 queuing system. So what I ask you to do is to pause the video here for some time based on what you have seen in the previous class you may be able to solve this problem so if uh, you pause the vehicle and think a little bit about it uh, and then come back to the video that would be great then i would ask you again during the video to pause and uh, think about other steps okay what i have here is uh, lambda t and mu t i have just written them based on what we had on the previous slide so that it's easier to work on this slide so lambda t is the arrival rate and i want to call or i want to get a function or an expression that gives me not the arrival rate but the number of vehicles that arrive so i call that rather than lambda t i call that a t so this is number of vehicles that arrive that have that has arrived by time t so keep in mind this is a cumulative number so from time 0 to time t how many vehicles have arrived so i call that a t and if you think we know that we can find a t by taking the integral of lambda t so that's what i have done here a t is the integral of lambda t dt from 0 to t so i have just put the function form of lambda t here if you find that integral or do the integration a t is going to be 2.2 t plus 0.17 over 2 t square minus 0.0032 over 3 t cube. I'm going to introduce another function. I call it b t. So this is cumulative number of vehicles that departed 
the system or the toll booth by time t okay so if you want to find b t what you need to do is to get the integration uh, find the integral of uh, mu t from 0 to t so that's what I have done here and integral of mu t dt from 0 to t if you just do that what you find is 1.2 plus 0 .00 plus 0.07 over 2 t square so I have the number of vehicles that arrive over time I have the number of vehicles that departed over time and if I want to find the Q lengths at any time the difference of these would be the Q lengths right actually let's take a look at that uh, graphically on the next slide so here I have drawn AT and BT so this is my arrival and this is the departure right so if I want to know the number of vehicles in Q at a certain time we said that that is this distance between arrival and departure right so if I call that Q of T that would be equal to a T minus B T correct if I want to find maximum Q lengths what do I do if I have the length of Q as a function of T I can take the first derivative of that say it equal to 0 that gives me the time that I have the maximum Q and if I put that T the value of T back into QT equation I would have the maximum Q length the question asked about total delay and maximum Q so we talked about maximum Q how about total delay the total delay is found by finding the area between A and B so if I call that as DT the area between these two curves would be integral from 0 to T of AT DT minus integral from 0 to t of bt dt right and what is the value of t that i have here that's gonna be this point where the q is gonna be gone how do i find that i just named it t star how do I find T star? T star is when the number of vehicles that have arrived is equal to the number of vehicles that have departed or in other words if you set A equal to B and solve for T the t that you're going to find is going to be t star right so let's go through different steps of this example and try to solve it but before before watching the rest of the video here is a perfect place for you guys to pause and see if you can find the solutions based on this information that i provided for you here and go through all the steps that you need and then on pause and continue with the video okay so we know that Q here is gonna be time dependent and it's gonna be deterministic so uh, if you want to find out the time that Q dissipates as I mentioned before we are gonna set AT equal to BT right so here I have done that uh, this is before taking the making the integration so I have written it this way 
so you can either write it this way or just go with this expression that we have here but at either rate if you do that you're gonna have this equation that we have here that gives you um, a, uh, an equation that has t u that has t q so you need to find t uh, you can use your calculators to find q, uh, t from this equation and it's gonna give you values that are either outside of the 90 minute study period that we have either they're gonna be negative or greater than 90 and if there is something that is in the middle that's going to give you the time that the Q dissipates. And if you solve the problem um, or solve the equation, the time that Q dissipate would be 61.8 minutes. So at this time, the Q is going to be gone. So if you want to find the total delay, you need to find integral of at dt from 0 to 61.8 and subtract um, integral of bt dt from that from 0 to 61.8 so let's do that and see what is going to be the total delay at this toll book so This is our AT that we are taking its integral. This is our BT that we are taking its integral. So you need to be good in integration or you need to use your calculator to find the value. But if you do that and go through all the steps, What you find is that your total delay would be 1925.8 vehicle minute. It's 1925.8 vehicle minutes. If you want to find what is the average delay, you need to find out the total number of vehicles that have gone through the system and divide this value by that. So average delay. is 1925.8 divided by number of vehicles processed by t equal to 61.8 either you divide it by number of vehicles that are processed or arrived by 61.8 why it doesn't matter because at that time your q is zero so the number of vehicles that are processed is equal to the number of vehicles that have arrived so q links as i mentioned before at any time is at minus bt and if you do that and you get a positive number that's fine if you get zero that's fine anytime that you start to see a negative number that means that the arrival rate is fall below departure rate and that means that you don't have any Q so if this gives you a negative value it means that you are looking at a time that Q is gone and QT is gonna be zero So here you see these integrals again because here we have put lambda t and here we have put mu t. So if you put lambda t mu t you need to take the integral. If you don't uh, want to put lambda t and mu t and you want to put a t and b t you have already done the integration and you just don't need to worry about it. So if you do this you're gonna have this um, uh, expression that gives you the q lengths over time or as a function of time so how do you find your maximum q you take the first derivative of your q lengths 
with respect to t and say it equal to zero that gives you the time at which q is gonna be max so you plug that number in your qt equation again and that gives you the maximum q length let's do that so dq to dt equal to zero you take the first derivative of that it's going to give you negative 0.33 point uh, negative 0.00321 t squared minus plus 0.1 t plus 1 equal to 0. If you solve that, it's going to give you t equal to 39.12. That is going to be the time that you're going to have the, high, the longest q. You plug that back into q. So if you do that, q at t equal to 39.12 would be equal to 51.58. Vehicles. That's going to be the longest queue that you're going to have in the system. So, in the rest of this uh, class, I want to talk um, about two different forms of queuing. The first one that I will talk about is MD1 queuing. So, our arrival is stochastic. Our departure is deterministic and we have only one server or channel. Here the assumption is that um, the arrival follows an exponentially um, a, an exponential distribution so we have Poisson arrivals departure is deterministic and a good example of this is a traffic light if you think about it um, vehicles are gonna arrive following a Poisson distribution but the amount of time that it takes each vehicle to be processed is more or less two seconds. So it's quite deterministic. And here we are just looking at a system that has one lane, right? So you have a traffic light here. And there is only one lane for vehicles that can go. So the arrival is stochastic but the process is more or less deterministic not a 100% deterministic but this this is a good example so the first thing that I want to introduce here is traffic intensity it doesn't have unit a unit and is the ratio of the arrival rate to the departure rate so as always, lambda is our arrival rate. Mu is our departure rate. And we define rho as traffic intensity. What is going to happen if your rho is greater than 1? If rho is greater than 1, our arrival is going to be consistently greater than our departure. So we're going to have queues that are going to build up and they're just going to grow. So the case that we're looking to or we, want, we would like to analyze in this course is the condition where rho is less than 1 so our arrival is less than departure but due to stochasticity we have some queues that build up and go we have some service time because maybe at some time uh, the number of vehicles that arrive is more than what we can process but over time it is less so here rather than going through the details of how we get these statistics that are gonna 
define our queuing system, I'm giving you the equation. So we have average lengths of Q and this is in the unit of vehicles. So what is your Q length on average uh, in terms of vehicles, not how many feet the Q length is. So that is going to be found by rho squared dividing by, divided by 2 into 1 minus rho. Average waiting time in Q. This is average waiting time for each vehicle. So that's how much you wait until the service started. So that is rho over 2 mu into 1 minus rho. And average time spent in the system. This is the summation of this time and average time that it takes uh, for the system to provide us with service. So that is going to be equal to 2 minus rho over 2 mu into 1 minus rho. And you find this time always by adding the time that you have to wait plus the average time that it takes for you to receive the service, which is 1 over lambda. Sorry, 1 over mu. Mu is our departure rate, right? Okay. So if you have a DD1 queuing um, in which your arrival is less than departure, you never are going to predict queue formation. Okay. Anytime that your arrival is more than departure, you see queues are going to form. However, in MD1 systems, it, when your mu is, when your lambda is less than mu, you still can see queues due to the stochasticities that we have and we are able to model now. So the last queuing system that we want to talk about is MM1. So arrival is stochastic, departure is also stochastic, and here we have one channel. So we have exponentially distributed departure time um, in addition to exponential distribution of arrival. So one, one example would be a toll booth uh, where the arrival of drivers is stochastic, but drivers don't have the exact change that they need to give to the person that is uh, at the toll booth. So there is some stochastic time for that person to find out uh, how much is how much the return is and as a result of that the departure also um, is a stochastic so again here we can define rho the same way and our rho is less than one so similar to md1 we have average length of q in units of vehicles that is rho square over one minus rho Average waiting time in Q is W bar equal to lambda over mu into mu minus lambda. And average time spent in the system is the summation of average Q waiting time and average departure time. And that is equal to 1 over mu minus lambda. Okay. So here is our example. Uh, we have a park attendant that takes an average of 15 seconds to distribute a brochure. So this is going to give us our departure rate. It is not the departure rate directly, but from these 15 seconds, we can find the departure rate. The distribution time varies depending on whether park patterns have questions related to park operating policies, operating policies given um, an average, so the arrival rate is 180 vehicles per hour. And if we assume that also that is uh, stochastic, we are going to have an MM1 queuing. So what is the length of queue, average waiting time in queue, and average time spent in the entire system? So I'm going to ask you to pause the uh, video here uh, for 
um, five minutes or so, go through this example, and then we work work it through together. Okay, so let's go through the example. Um, our arrival rate is 180 vehicles per hour. You divide it by 60, so we have three vehicles that arrive every minute. It takes us 15 seconds to give the brochure on, on, on an average. So our departure rate is 60 divided by 15 or four vehicles per minute. So if you wanna find the intensity, it's gonna be equal to lambda divided by mu or arrival divided by departure. So that's three divided by four or 0.75. It's less than one. That's, that's good. So Q bar or average number of vehicles in Q is rho square divided by min, one minus rho. So it's 70, 0.75 square divided by one minus 0.75 or 2.25 vehicles. W bar or average time in Q is lambda divided by mu into mu minus lambda is three divided by four into four minus three it's 0.75 minutes per vehicle and finally our t bar or average time in the system is gonna be one minute per vehicle so that is equal to one minus one divided by mu minus lambda or one divided by four minus three that's one so you can find it this way or we know that w bar is 0.75 and service time is 1 4 or 60 over uh, or, or 15 over 60 in minutes so that's 0.75 plus 0.25 or one minute so here is our last slide for uh, queuing theory and pretty much with this slide I'm concluding chapter 5. From next class we are going to start chapter 6 and we'll be talking about um, highway and especially freeway facilities.